Hey there, Mountaineers, I'm Matterhorn Matt, and welcome to episode 6 of Historyland. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the original Disneyland Second Gate, Westcott Center. Let's get started. In 1984, Michael Eisner became the CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Good evening. Excuse me, I'm just finishing up a little work. And immediately saw potential in expanding the number of hotel rooms in Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So in 1986, the newly named Disney Inn added 150 rooms, and in 1988, the Grand Floridian Resort and the Caribbean Beach Resort opened to guests. But when it came to adding more hotels in California, they ran into an issue. See, the Disneyland Hotel technically wasn't owned by the Disney Company. Back when Disneyland was under construction, the budget was tight and Walt didn't have enough money to build a hotel for his guests. So he ended up leasing the Disney naming rights for 99 years to Jack Rather, which meant that only he and his company could construct hotels with the Disney name on it in Southern California. So on October 5th, 1955, the Disneyland Hotel opened. My friend Rob Plays recently uploaded a video all about this topic, so I recommend checking out his video if you want more information on this. Disney ended up buying Rather's company for over $250 million, which meant that they could finally use the Disney name on hotels in California. So Michael Eisner began drawing up plans for a second gate in California to expand Disneyland into a multi-day resort area. Coming up next, learn about Disney history with Matterhorn Matt on Historyland. When Disneyland first opened, we sent folks spinning. Our 10th birthday was wild. The 20th, out of control. Our 30th, unbelievable. 1995 is our 40th birthday with our newest rides, spectacular shows, the wildest parade yet, and the tuniest of lands. So bring your family and celebrate with ours. It's the best Disneyland ever. In 1991, Disney announced plans to build a second gate in California called Westcott Center. The overall budget for the park was, get this, $3.1 billion, which is high even by Disney's standards. Along with the second park, Disney also wanted their own special assessment district in California, similar to the Reedy Creek Improvement District in Florida, that would house Disneyland and all future projects they had planned. Disney's planned projects besides Westcott would include receiving money to improve the Indiana Jones adventure and the construction of Toontown. The resort hotel district would add around 4,600 rooms to the Disneyland Resort. A brand new 800-room new Disneyland hotel would be built based off the Hotel Del Coronado, similar to the Grand Floridian Resort in Florida. A renovation of the original Disneyland Hotel, an advanced transportation system and walkways for pedestrians in the Disneyland Plaza, a Disneyland Center connecting the Resort Hotel District and Disneyland Plaza, which would eventually become Downtown Disney, a 5,000-seat amphitheater called the Disneyland Bowl, three parking structures, and a boardwalk that would have outdoor dining. I'll leave links in the description to an article on ThemeParkTourist.com with more information if you guys want. All of these ideas would make up the new Disneyland Resort, but Westcott would be the center of the whole project. Westcott would be very similar to Walt Disney World's Epcot with a bunch of new ideas. Ventureport would contain the lobby that would lead you to the magnificent Space Station Earth, the icon of Westcott. Space Station Earth would be a 300-foot golden version of Spaceship Earth, sitting on a lush green forest, which would tower over the 180-foot Spaceship Earth in Epcot, and this would also make it the tallest structure in Orange County. Inside Space Station Earth would be an all-new attraction, Cosmic Journeys, which was supposedly meant to be an updated version of Disneyland's adventure through inner space. Like its Florida sister, Westcott would have a Future World and a World Showcase. Future World would house three pavilions, the Wonders of Living, the Wonders of Earth, and the Wonders of Space. The Wonders of Living would be all about the human body, housing familiar attractions like Body Wars, Cranium Command, and The Making of Me, 
as well as a new attraction based off a documentary, Powers of Ten, and supposedly an updated version of Journey into Imagination. Oh, hello there! So glad you could come along! The Wonders of Earth Pavilion would take guests to the jungle, the desert, the deep sea, the arctic, along with other exciting areas of the world. The Wonders of Space Pavilion was the least developed of all the three, and I wasn't able to find any information on it. But if you guys could find some, link it down in the comments below so I can check it out. As for World Showcase, it would have focused on different regions of the world instead of individual countries. Called the Four Corners of the World, it would be home to the Americas Pavilion, the Europe Pavilion, the Asia Pavilion, and the Africa Pavilion. There would also have been a boat ride around the lagoon called the World Cruise, which would have been the longest ride ever built by Disney, taking around 45 minutes at max, dropping riders off at each pavilion port. When designing Westcott, Imagineers wanted to offer new kinds of entertainment alongside things guests already loved about theme parks, and one of the ideas that came up would include the ability to stay overnight in one of the World Showcase buildings. This idea has sort of lived on in the new Star Wars Hotel, being constructed at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida. Another interesting aspect of Westcott would be the transportation. Guests would have moving walkways, monorails, and people movers. From the parking structures, guests would be able to take different people movers to the Disneyland Plaza, and then have the ability to hop on a monorail to a different area of the resort. But problems with designs and public support forced Disney's hand, changing the Disneyland Resort forever. Up next, learn about Disney history and more with Matterhorn Matt on Historyland. Disney World invites you to be our guest. Call 407-W-Disney. When Disney released plans for Westcott Center in 1991, they thought their plans would go through smoothly with the city of Anaheim. But they soon realized that there were a large majority of people who opposed this project. For one, citizens of Anaheim complained that the 300-foot space station Earth would be an eyesore to the surrounding areas. They also clamored that the traffic would increase dramatically. Many businesses also found out that the land they owned were a part of Disney's new resort. Altogether, Disney would have needed the city of Anaheim to acquire more than 100 acres of land from business owners. Things were only made worse when Euro Disney underperformed, forcing Michael Eisner to make serious budget cuts all around. All of this eventually led to the cancellation of Westcott in 1995, and other theme parks Disney had in the works. But hope was not lost in the second gate for Disneyland. Eventually, Disney's California Adventure, Downtown Disney, and the Grand Californian Hotel was built. Not quite what Disney wanted, but they did what they could with the $600 million. Since then, California Adventure has sort of moved away from the California theme, replacing Paradise Pier with Pixar Pier, and the long-rumored Marvel Land coming to the southeast side of the park. But guests will never forget the legacy of Westcott Center and the impact it had in Disneyland's future. And that's the basic history of Westcott Center. Linked in the description are more articles on the history of this massive project, in case you guys want more information. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share with all your Disney-loving friends. Also, click the link in the description to support me on Patreon. Without your guys' support, I wouldn't be able to continue this channel, and with your help, I'll be able to bring you vlogs from inside the park with some of my good friends. I also wanted to give a huge thanks to my recent patrons. Also, click the links in the description to follow me on Twitter, and to listen to my newest episode of Matterhorn Mondays with Alex the Historian, where we talk about Disneyland's infrastructure. I feel like... I don't know, I feel like it should be one or the other. 
Disney should somehow enforce or strong enforce stronger that people shouldn't wait all these six or five hours for the parade or for Fantasmic. I feel like it should be an hour before it's just first come first serve. But wow, I now that I said that out loud, I feel like a lot of people would be beating each other up on getting the best views. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there is a little bit of give and take with it. People would be beating each other over the head to find a good spot. <laughs> yeah. But then again, that that's what the excitement is all about. You know, who whose butt are you going to kick today, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and as always, I want to hear what you guys think. Comment down below what your favorite part of Westcott would have been, and if you would have liked a Westcott over California Adventure. I'll see you next time, Mountaineers. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow.